around his holy hill who can approach his holy place only the one with clean hands and a pure heart who can ascend his holy hill who can approach his holy place only the one with clean hands and a pure heart come let us go up Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord. Come, let us go up. Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord. Come, let us go up. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. The psalmist invites us, come let us go up to the mountain of the Lord. And he reminds us who is able, worthy to enter the temple on the mountain of the Lord. The one with clean hands and a pure heart. Becoming deeply aware of our unworthiness to enter into his presence. And this grace that we receive to worship him this morning. Let us acknowledge our unworthiness and our sinfulness. We bring several intentions to this altar this morning. We continue to pray for Isabella Maria, that 19-year-old infant who had a brain surgery to remove a tumor from her brain. She continues to be under intensive care. We pray for her complete recovery. Today is the 54th birthday of the nephew of Sister Josepha here, Mr. Sibi. We pray for him in a very special way, wishing him God's blessings, particularly for his good health because he had a stroke and he is now paralyzed. We pray for God's blessings of particularly of good health on him and on his family. Two persons have died yesterday. We pray for their souls. Mr. Matthew Pimpilil who died in Kerala and Father Nicholas Guangdiet, 49 years old who sedition priest who died in Dimapur of uh, comorbidities and COVID. Let us entrust the souls of these departed to the mercy of God that they may be received into God's presence and into God's peace. Let us ask God to pardon our own sins and make us worthy of these mysteries this morning. I confess to Almighty God and, and to you, my, my brothers and sisters, sisters that, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray, to pray for me, for me to the, the Lord, Lord our God. God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Let us pray through the intercession of Saint Padre Pio, one of the most popular saints of the last century. A mystic, a man of prayer, a man who was a minister of the mercy of God in the confessional. Almighty ever-living God, who by a singular grace gave the priest Saint Pius a share in the cross of your son and by means of his ministry renewed the wonders of your mercy. Grant that through his intercession we may be united constantly to the sufferings of Christ and so brought happily to the glory of the resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Haggai. Come, 
was in the second year of Darius the king, in the sixth month, on the first day of the month, the word of the Lord came by the hand of Haggai the prophet to Zerubbabel the son of Shiltel, governor of Judah, and to Joshua <clears throat> the son of Jezodak, the high priest. Thus says the Lord of hosts, These people say the time has not yet come to rebuild the house of the Lord. Then the word of the Lord came by the hand of Haggai the prophet. Is it a time for you yourselves to dwell in your paneled houses while this house lies in ruins? Now therefore, thus says the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. You have sown much and harvested little. You eat, but you never have enough. You drink, but you never have your fill. You clothe yourselves, but no one is warm. And he who earns wages does so to put them into bag with holes. Thus says the Lord of hosts, Consider your ways. Go up to the hills and bring wood and build a house, that I may take pleasure in it and that I may be glorified, says the Lord. Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. Your response. The Lord takes delight in his people. The, the Lord, Lord takes delight in his people. Sing a new song to the Lord, his praise in the assembly of the faithful. Let Israel rejoice in its maker. Let Zion's children exult in their king. Response. The Lord, the Lord takes delight in his people. Let them praise his name with dancing and make music with timbrel and harp. For the Lord takes delight in his people. He crowns the poor with salvation. Response. The Lord, the Lord takes, takes delight in his people. Let the faithful exult in glory and rejoice as they take their rest. Let the praise of God be in their mouths. This is an honor for all his faithful. Response. The, the Lord, Lord takes delight in his, his people. Acclamation. Sing hallelujah to the Lord. Sing hallelujah to the Lord. Sing hallelujah. Sing hallelujah. Sing hallelujah to the Lord. I am the way and the truth and the life, says the Lord. No one comes to the Father except through me. Sing hallelujah to the Lord. Sing hallelujah to the Lord. Sing hallelujah. Sing hallelujah. Sing hallelujah to the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. The ninth chapter, verses 7 to 9. At that time, Herod the Tetrarch heard about all that was happening, and he was perplexed, because it was said by some that John had been raised from the dead, by some that Elijah had appeared, and by others that one of the prophets of old had risen. Herod said, John I beheaded. But who is this about whom I hear such things? And he sought to see him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. I would like to reflect this morning on the first reading from the book of Haggai. Haggai is the second shortest book in the Old Testament, the, old, the, the shortest being the one chapter book of Obadiah. What is the historical context of this reading that we have heard this morning? This week we were hearing of, from the book of Ezra how King Cyrus allowed the people, the survivors of the exile, to return to Jerusalem and to build the temple. Ezra says, the Spirit of God raised up Cyrus to do this and so about 50,000 people came back from Babylon back to Jerusalem to rebuild the temple that was uh, destroyed by the father of Cyrus 
the temple was destroyed the city was destroyed and now they have come back to build it and we also heard during this week in the first readings how people were ordered to contribute to the reconstruction of the temple and one of those who come back with this group is one of those who were taken into exile as a young child hagai so we can understand after 70 years he's a really old man god moves hagai and another younger man zakaria to prophesy during this period of the reconstruction of the temple now when they come back they immediately rebuild the altar first and then they have their uh, sacrifices and then they build the foundation the temple was a magnificent temple built by by solomon then they get discouraged because the massive scale of this temple reconstruction is beyond their they think beyond their means it is making no progress so after 2 years of work they give it up there is also an add a factor for this temple construction stopping the samaritans the jews who had stayed back then intermarried with the pagans uh, volunteer to help the jews and they don't like it you know religious division and so samaritans take effect offense and they pick a fight then they also send a delegation back to cyrus to say that uh, these people are being petty they are not allowing us to help rebuild the temple let us say there is a litigation and because of litigation we know so many constructions around us are halted lying as skeletons because cases drag on in the court and so added reason being this the temple construction is stopped 14 years more drag on temple foundation is now overgrown with weeds but the people get on with their lives they build their own houses they do farming they get married they have their normal lives they forget about the purpose for which they came back from babylon they were sent back from babylon the mission on which they were sent they forget and it is in this context that hagai the old man is roused up by the spirit of god to prophesy and to command the people of god to rebuild the temple one particular point of interest about the prophecy of hagai is that it is perfectly dated in the second year of darius the king the son of cyrus in the sixth month on the first day of the month so if we use the historical dating it will be the 1st of september 532 bc so it is perfectly uh, dated one of the few prophecies absolutely perfectly dated in fact there are four prophecies in this book of hagai and all the four have a particular date hagai tells the word of god thus says the lord of hosts not his own word these people say the time has yet to come to rebuild the house of the lord and then he indicts them about their way of thinking that they go about living comfortable lives in their paneled houses comfortable lives in their paneled houses while the house of god lies in ruins that they go about their farming and their business but they do not get desired results that they eat and drink but are never satisfied because the blessing of god is not upon them and so the lord of hosts says consider your ways he uses this term twice in this passage consider your ways think carefully about how you live go up to the hills and bring wood and build the house rebuild the house of god that i may take pleasure in it that i may be glorified says the lord so what does this uh, prophecy of hagai the historical context of this people and the response of the people have to do with us it's very simple message for us today put first things first and the first of all first things is god put god first jesus says seek ye first the kingdom of god and all the rest will be given to you that's the message when someone jesus invites someone to follow him and he says let me go back and bury my father let me fulfill my family obligations and come jesus says let the dead bury their dead you come and follow me put first things first the glory of god is the first thing that these people are called to build their lives around the prophet says rebuild the temple that god may take pleasure in it and that god may be glorified saint ignatius of loyola brought this to our notice in a very powerful way with his 
with his mantra let us say for the greater glory of god saint paul says all that you do whether you eat or you drink do it for the glory of god so first things first a priority for our life and once we have that priority blessings will follow once we have that priority we will be able to sort out difficulties once we have our priority the lord will show us the way the prophet says go up to the hills that is where the trees are cut them down bring them down and rebuild the house of god the second is stop making excuses the excuses that these people were making is that it is not your time they put a theology to that they were in effect saying if the lord really wanted us to rebuild the house effectively he would help us he would make it happen but it is not happening there are troubles there are litigations there are difficulties that means this is not the time turning the logic around to justify their own lack of interest lack of priority we can make a whole lot of excuses to not put god first in our life isaiah says i am a man of unclean lips jeremiah says i am only a little child how can i do this those are excuses god shows way forward we can say who am i i am but a lay person i am only a simple sister i am a very ordinary priest what can i do those are excuses if we put god first we will find a way god will show us the way and god will give us the means to achieve the purposes for which he is sending us mother teresa of our city said i am only a simple pencil in the hand of god it is he who does the drawing but she also said i am only a little drop what we are doing is only a little drop in the ocean but the ocean will be incomplete if that little drop is not there that is the approach that we need to have no excuses only commitment the third is we need to move beyond our selfishness these people got busy with their routine lives farming and building families and building comfortable homes but they forgot about the god who had brought them there we are reminded of the parable of the wedding feast to which people were called and one said i have bought new oxen i must go and check them out i have bought a new land i must go and see whether everything is okay i am newly married i must give time to my wife excuses selfishness we are called to move beyond our selfish little interests our selfish little preoccupations and see god and what he wants from us in our lives and the fourth is we need to believe in the blessings in this later verses 15 prophet hagai will say and the lord was present with them when they started doing resuming the work of building the temple god was with them once we give ourselves to the work of god god's blessings will come into our lives and fourthly the invitation that the prophet gives the lord gives through the mouth of the prophet consider your ways other translations will have carefully review how you are living carefully consider your lifestyle we are called to a daily evaluation of our path on the way of god a course correction we need to do daily the ycs young christians students methodology of the review of life reminds us of this see judge act look at your daily life in the light of god's word light of god's plan and make course corrections act accordingly socrates this the greek philosopher had said the unexamined life is not worth living the unexamined christian life is not worth the kingdom of heaven the saints have continually called us to this daily examination of conscience this practice of the daily examination of conscience to review the day at the end of the day and see whether we were faithful to what god wanted us to be and if we were not faithful to do a course correction one step at a time one little action at a time one little choice at a time to come back to the road of god and to make progress on the path of holiness padre pio is a good model for us who in spite of his celebrity status continuously remained as a humble friar a man of prayer a man of simplicity a man of quiet suffering a man of great availability and generosity especially in the confessional through his intercession 
let us ask for this grace to be able to put god first in our life of joy blessed be god blessed be god blessed be god forever amen blessed be god blessed be god Blessed be God forever. Amen. Pray, dear sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Most merciful God, who were pleased to create in blessed Padre Pio the new man in your image, the old having passed away graciously grant we pray that renewed like him we may offer you the acceptable acceptable sacrifice of reconciliation through christ our lord amen the lord be with you and with your spirit lift up your hearts we lift them up to the lord let us give thanks to the lord our god it is right and just it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks lord holy father almighty and eternal god through christ jesus our lord for as on the festival of saint padre pio you bid your church rejoice so too you strengthen her by the example of his holy life teach her by his words of preaching and keep her safe in answer to his prayers and so with the company of angels and saints we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim holy hosanna hosanna in the highest hosanna 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 in the highest Lord we lift up your name with a heart full of praise be exalted o lord i god hosanna in the highest glory 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 in the highest glory 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 in the highest Lord we lift up your name 
with a heart full of praise. Be exalted, O Lord my God. Glory to the King of kings. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith your faith, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Thomas, our Archbishop, all the clergy, the religious, and your faithful people. Remember your servants, Matthew Paimpalil and Father Nicholas Guangdiat, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that they who were united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with Saint Padre Pio, Saint John Bosco, Mother Teresa, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord's Prayer teaches us the secret of the priority of God, to keep the kingdom of God and his will as the single most priority in our life. Let us pray as Jesus has taught us to pray. Our Father, who, who art in heaven, in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and, and forgive, forgive us our, our trespasses, trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, O Lord, we pray, from every evil, especially the evil of distracted, scattered, unfocused lives. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your children gathered here, and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will. 
who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord Jesus be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. May the receiving of your body and blood, Lord Jesus Christ, not bring us to judgment and condemnation, but through your loving mercy be for us protection in mind and body and a healing remedy. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away our sins. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy, worthy that you should, should enter, enter under, under my, my roof, but, but only say the word, say the word and, and my soul, soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. Amen. His love will ever end. He rests within my heart for my God loves me. His gentle hand, He stretches over me. Those strong clouds threaten the day he will set me free. He comes to me in shedding bread and wine. He brings me Life that will reach past the end of time. My God loves me. His faithful love endures. And I will live like a child held in love, secure. The joys of love, as offerings now we bring. The pains of love will be lost in the praise we sing. 
let us join our brethren who are following this Holy Eucharist online as they make their act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Prayer to Saint Joseph Hail, Guardian, Guardian of, of the Redeemer, Redeemer spouse, spouse of, of the Blessed, Blessed Virgin Mary, Mary, to you, you God and blessed is His only Son, in you, you Mary placed her trust, with, with you, you Christ, Christ became man. man. Blessed, Blessed Joseph, to us, to us too, show yourself a Father, and guide us in the path of life. Obtain for us grace, mercy, mercy and, and courage, and defend us from every evil. Amen. Let us pray. By the power of the sacrament, Lord, we pray, lead us always in your love through the example of blessed Padre Pio and bring to fulfillment the good work you have begun in us until the day of Christ Jesus, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in the joy of the Lord. Thanks be to God. O Virgin, fair star of the sea, my dearest mother, pray for me. O Virgin, fair star of the sea, my dearest mother, pray for me. O Lady, full of God's own grace, Who's carrying hands the child embrace, Who listen to the Spirit's word, Believed and trusted in the Lord. O worthy fair star of the sea, my dearest mother, pray for me. O lady who believing Spain, but still believed that love would reign, on who will watch Jesus die. As on the cross they raised him high. O Virgin, fair star of the sea, My dearest mother, pray for me.